Very happy to have with us as we continue the show, Jared Ball, the curator of I Mix What I Like, also, of course, one of the principals at Black Power Media. There's a lot of great things at Black Power Media, but I do want to shout out the Remix Morning Show, which is very funny as well as very informative. But Jared, Dr. Jared Ball, also of Morgan State University, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Thanks again for having me. Well, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, the film that we're bringing up here wasn't much of a pleasure. Uh, you know, we actually, this is the second time I think this year, Jared, we've had the opportunity to chat about a Netflix uh, documentary of sorts as it concerns Malcolm X. And of course, I also want to note that you were one of the editors along with Todd Stephen Burroughs of A Lie of Reinvention. That's A Lie of Reinvention, which is an excellent collection commenting on the Manning Marable biography of Malcolm X. But I, I mean, there's so many, in a way, I don't even really know 100% where to start with this one, Jared. I mean, I, I found that the, in and of itself, I mean, I thought it was one, I did, well, first and foremost, it's called Blood Brothers, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. It was based on a book that I never even really know existed, knew existed before. It didn't seem to really bring much of anything to the table. I couldn't even really fully figure out, you know, what it is. But it really just does feel like Netflix has, you know, decided to fully exploit the legacy of Malcolm X. I mean, how do you parse sort of the financial and the ideological of why these pieces are being produced and why they're being produced now? Well, I mean, I think even looking at the the array of people that were brought in to comment on the film in this one, uh, you 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 can see a little bit of why they would do it. Uh, Malcolm remains such a big figure that has cut across so many spectrums of politics, academia, journalism, uh, you know, uh, sensationalism in terms of the 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 beef and the crime story and the assassination. There's so much there, and then of course because he remains such an enormous figure. That in terms of politics, he's he's again akin to the he's too big to fail. He's too big to be omitted. He's too big to 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 be uh, fully erased. So there just has to be this ongoing campaign to uh, airbrush and and rebrand and soften uh, uh, and reascribe <clears throat> a version of Malcolm that will not inspire more Malcolm. So that's ultimately what mm -hmm. I think it is. But I mean, you get, you know, you get, um, you know, again, the academic world one, has written so much about him. So you see some of that there. The journalism world has produced so much about him. Uh, uh, you know, he continues to be a content generating, you know, uh, endless font. So, uh, and again, because he continues to inspire so many radicals around the world that he has to be uh, constantly rebranded posthumously, uh, you know, uh, to be made safe. So that's what we saw again here. So again, you, like you said, we saw nothing new. The standard uh, Nation of Islam beef, and even where they briefly mentioned the counterintelligence program, they say it existed and the FBI were very interested in, you know, interfering. But they then they literally, uh, I'd say at one point, they were just sitting back and watching as Elijah and Malcolm went to war. Uh, and, yeah, I think uh, they say the worst um, thing that the FBI yeah. did in there is they said, oh, they tailed them once. Yeah, yeah, they actually, they, they the only some, appearance yeah. it made, well, it was just like, I, it was so bizarre. It's like they almost use it as a, as a storytelling mechanism because some of the people, you know, the, the, the documentary was in that style where there's no narrator. They let the people they interview narrate. And so those people were like, oh, we know this because of an FBI, of an FBI communique <laughs> that was tailing them, you know, and it's, that's the only appearance it makes almost as if it was like a good thing, because now we know this happened thanks to the FBI. It was almost like presented as something positive, which was bizarre. I also have to say, one of the bizarre elements for me is that, again, for instance, our dear brother uh, uh, Peter Bailey is interviewed in this piece, the the legendary journalist who worked with Malcolm, who was there at the Audubon the day he was assassinated, and somebody you would, of course, want to include in a documentary about Malcolm. Uh, but uh, the last time he was in, you know, he's a contributor to our book, as were you, Eugene. Uh, uh, thank you very much, of course. But 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 as, after the last time he went through the Netflix, Netflix, uh, you know, churning mill or whatever, uh, Bailey came out and said he didn't like what he, what was done 
So I'm a little bit shocked that he would show back up here. Uh, maybe he, you know, this was a different crew and he thought it would it would turn out a little better. But I'd be very interested to see what he has to say about it. I was glad, for instance, that Kondo wasn't there uh, and they brought in some new faces that we haven't seen, at least in a while, uh, if at all, in, to, to comment on the film. But again, all to do the same thing, make it all about the Nation of Islam uh, and, and the beef therein, and then nothing about the politics that Malcolm espoused and the ideas with which he worked that made him a threat, that made him uh, uh, and also welcomed uh, in so many parts of the world as well. So there was none of that. And then we just get this sort of, you know, the two, the two friends break up, this the evil nation of Islam that did it, and you know, uh, uh, and at the end we see, we get to see Muhammad Ali uh, uh, redeemed at the at Atlanta Olympics, uh, and we get to hear the the daughters of the two talk about the reconciliation and the fact that Muhammad Ali regretted uh, breaking with 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 Malcolm earlier. So it, it, you know, it's. On that level, it's great, it's wonderful, but in each case, you don't really get an understanding of why either of them did what they did politically, uh, or why, mm -hmm. of course, both of them were targeted differently uh, by the state for, for you know, destruction of the career and, of course, assassination. Yeah, the lack of context was almost everything. I mean, you know, there's two separate points where there's shots of Malcolm and A. and Babu, of course, the well-known Zanzibari, well, maybe not well-known, should be well-known, Zanzibari revolutionary. I was playing a major role at the time. Kwame Nkrumah actually appears in like eight different photos. And I just say all that to say that none of these names were actually <laughs> mentioned. It's just sort no. of alluded to. They were in Africa. <laughs> things were happening in Africa. They don't even was, show up. Realism was falling apart. It was, I have they to say, They don't even give like, him a lower third boring. to say, like, right. this is Kwame Nkrumah. Right. <laughs> They they made they made two amazing incredible historical radical figures boring, too. Like that's another thing that was like weird to watch. It, they they how do you make Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali boring? It was actually kind of impressive that they were able to make them so like one dimensional almost, and it was just kind of easy to like doze off or you know look at my phone. Well, I, I just watched it before we, I actually just watched it before we started, so. <laughs> well, it's, 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 you did well in recovering your energy. Uh, none of his shows in the broadcast. Uh, the, 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 to your point, the one way you make them one dimensional is you strip them of their politics. You strip them of the context of the movements they were in. You strip them of the conversations Malcolm was having with the people you already mentioned and, and others. You strip, you know, uh, Maya Angelou is mentioned as, you know, uh, uh, at least her name I remember got mentioned as being, uh, uh, but, but even with her, there's there's no discussion. Well, what did she say about the trip? What what did what did he say about you know? What, you know I, I don't know why were they there? Right. What were they doing? Yeah. You know what was the point? <laughs> They're just like Maya Angelou is in Ghana <laughs> with Malcolm X. This is so random. Like they're all just traveling. It's like right. they're all just hanging out. You know what I mean? Like it's like so that's so how you make them one dimensional. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, you're gonna be in Ghana next week. Me too, boo. Let's see each other. Yeah, it's gonna be it's like. I mean, that's it, 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 this what it is. It, it's like, what were they doing? Uh, yes. uh So I mean, I, you know, uh, that's how you make them one dimensional, and that's how you make them boring. Because of yeah. course, you know, nobody cares about two men going traveling around. The, I mean, without I mean, like that's not even they didn't even give it a Hollywood script. It's just like literally mm -hmm. two men. He went there. There's a picture. He went over there. There's a picture. And then they met, and they, you know, uh, and Muhammad Ali uh, dissed Malcolm, and that and that was it. But but none of of, uh, for instance, it, it would have been uh, a very interesting. Uh, and and you know what? And I admit, I, I'll, I'll take a self criticism here. I should have pulled out the documents myself and read them here. Like, what does the COINTELPRO papers? What do they say about? their surveillance of Malcolm overseas? Or what did the CIA documents say about the surveillance and when they met and ran into Malcolm? I mean, there, there was the, 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 the discussion, is, at least working off of memory, was uh, we need to be concerned about their ability to not only travel, but have a positive effect on the people that they're talking to in terms of spreading their message and giving a worldview, uh, a view of the United States that that the state doesn't want the world to have. Like that was the context of the of the of the the, the reporting, the surveillance. But we don't get any of that, which would have made it, I think, a little bit more interesting. But so to you, you know, they were, they were reduced to one dimensional. And that one dimension was, let's just talk about them meeting and talk about the way the Nation of Islam messed everything up. 
Um, and, right. and then but it's also on. like a weird paradox because on the one hand, it has sort of this anti-nation of Islam thing. Muhammad Ali regretted it. But by as you know, we're all talking about flattening out Malcolm X and making his feud with Elijah Muhammad seem only personal uh, rather than mainly political. I mean, I mean, you know, whatever we want to say about Elijah Muhammad's personal life, that's obviously was a part of a, a deeper struggle by Malcolm X internally to build his own forces. But that obviously wasn't their main difference. They don't even allude to it. But anyway, to, before I get too far off my point, but then the way they use um, the brother from the nation and then also Muhammad Ali's brother, which I, I have to say felt a little exploitative to me just on its own, was almost to justify or uh, the, the shunning of Malcolm X and to suggest that he was somehow wrong. And it's sort of the subtle use of editing that I'm sure if we had like the producer on or something, they would try to push back on me. But I just found myself thinking about that. And I also found myself thinking about the same thing in the assassination of Malcolm X documentary, where it was just sort of this, this vehemence in favor of Elijah Muhammad and against Malcolm X that I, I thought added a lot of, of decontextualized credence somehow to you know, uh, 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 his expulsion from the nation and the break by Muhammad Ali. Well, I, 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 again, another important point. I mean, if, if, if you're telling the story from the perspective of the Nation of Islam and an Elijah Muhammad supporter, of course, that would be the, the, the presentation you would want to offer and want to make sure was included. If you're trying to give a rounded, full contextual description, you would want to include that perspective. But for instance, we don't have people interviewed in either of these pieces that we're talking about from Netflix who represent, for instance, the worldview of Malcolm X in any of its formations. So we don't hear from revolutionary nationalists and internationalists and so on. And so we're not hearing them offer an analysis of the situation. We're not hearing from uh, the socialist world, the, the anti-colonial world. We're not hearing from those elements in a discussion about this. So sure, from their perspective, of course, you, you dissed Elijah Muhammad and the clips they played in the thing from Malcolm. And even in our own book, I remember, for instance, Kamal Franklin, our colleague at BPM as well, made the great point that, that he was one them to make the great point that that Malcolm is to be, you know, not totally um, free from criticism and how he engaged the media and stoked the flames and the hostilities and even the focus on the nation of Islam. I mean, he did in, in some cases participate in that as well, uh, uh, even if it's understandable in his in his anger in the moment. But but the point being, if there's no no one there to offer the, the broader context of his politics or to be given the time. Because, you know, was that Kondo was interviewed, Peter Bailey's interviewed, but, but in very limited capacity and clearly not given the range to the time to, to lay out the, 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 the broader political scene, then, then of course we're just left with, you know, what we got. And, uh, and the piece with, with Muhammad Ali's brother is, is um, again, would be important were all these other elements included as well, but left on their own and then left with the historical analysis coming from, uh, you know, Peter Goldman, who's, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, credited with giving a solid history. There's certainly, you know, he's not d demeaned, in the, but he's not offering it from a perspective of radical activist or organizer or Malcolmite politically. Uh, Zahir Ali, who I've talked about plenty of times, is, you know, politically, I would argue, opposed to where Malcolm was at the end. And he's one of the more prominent spokespeople now uh, coming off the aftermath of, of, of the Marable book we were critical of. So he's there to limit, again, I think, narrowly the discussion. So, of course, at the end of the day, you know, when, when all that's left is the, the Nation of Islam perspective, uh, a little bit from Muhammad Ali's brother, and then, of course, really just the state's perspective, the dominant narrative of we don't want to talk about those politics. Let's just leave it as a as a as a gang thing and a street thing um, that went wrong. Uh, it just it ends up with what it is. But mm -hmm. but uh, uh, of course, again, we have to remind that Netflix, for all the promotion they're getting here, are not here to provide us with our revolutionary analysis and content. No, they are uh, not. That's no, they why we are come not. Here. <laughs> so you and, know, and, you know uh, uh, we that... have to recognize that as well. Yeah. To, to, well, to that point, you know, it's like the sort of the way that Hollywood de-radicalizes these very radical figures. And for all the reasons that you stated, we actually did get a question in the super chat that it would be nice to, I guess, end on here uh, from Matt. So thank you, Matt. Again, if you throw money in the super chat, we will read your comment on air, assuming it's not totally inappropriate and that I'm good with it. Um, but the question was, what did you guys think of the portrayal of Malcolm X in last year's 
one night in Miami. And of course, one night in Miami was the movie that depicted this meeting between Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali and Jim Brown and Sam Cooke um, for one night in Miami. I personally thought that was another case of really flattening out these characters. Um, all of them. And especially with Malcolm X. I mean, Malcolm X was depicted as a crybaby. I don't know if you remember watching that movie, but they must have made him cry like eight times, like tears, which is every every time he got into an argument, somebody would start crying. So I just thought that was kind of hilarious that that's how he was depicted in a Hollywood movie. And not to mention how the others were depicted. I mean, Sam Cooke was just depicted as this really greedy, hardcore capitalist who only cared about making money and had to be like, convinced to care. Uh, and so he kind of ended up caring, but only because he could ultimately make money off of it. But I'm curious, I guess, Jared, what would you say very briefly about that movie since our super chatter asked? I appreciate the super chat as well. And, 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 uh, uh, thanks for the question. Same basic thing that, that, you know, we don't know what was said in that hotel room because there was no transcript unless the FBI wants to turn over what they may have been recording. I don't know, but I don't anyway, just saying, but we don't know what was said in there. So it's all fictitious. It comes out of a play that, that preexisted. So, so my point would be that ultimately it was known well in advance that what the content of, uh, the content that would be delivered would be, uh, safe for a Netflix distribution of a discussion of of uh, that would include Malcolm X. So the idea that 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 alone in a hotel room, Jim Brown and Malcolm X are having tearful discussions over light skinned people only being involved because they're light skin is is I, I I I can't imagine that at that stage at that point at the height that Malcolm was you know what the struggle that he was dealing with just by himself. Uh, uh, at that point in his his life, um, that that would have been the the, the surface the, the level of the conversation was kind of uh, uh, unbelievable, but perfectly safe for uh, uh, consumption, which is uh, honestly, in, in particularly in the theater world, targeting an affluent white audience, and that's ultimately what these are these products are targeting. So, if an affluent white audience is going to find it acceptable to watch an hour and a half of Malcolm X, this is what the, you know. Th that's what. That's the version that they, the know, version. they're, they're going to want. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, let me just ask you another question, Jared. I, now that you just said that, I, I don't know. This just popped in my head. How do you see the Spike Lee movie in relationship to some of these newer pieces of a piece, or it set the it it it, it laid the groundwork. Like if we want to look now, my my initial I haven't, without having given any thought to this, it would be the piece that 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 set the tone and laid opened the door for all of this uh, and gave sanction to all of this. There was so much debate. There's so much to say about that movie, but it does so many of the things that are done in microcosm in these movies, in these in these uh, subsequent pieces. It, it, <clears throat> almost exclusively on the nation of Islam and the failings there. Nothing of his internationalism. Nothing of his socialism. Nothing of his guerrilla warfare. Nothing of his his. You know, nothing of his anti-colonial politics, nothing of the meetings, nothing of his, you know, you get more of Malcolm's international travel in the film with Will Smith <laughs> than you do in Spike's film. And that's that's wow. sad, uh, but it's true. Uh, so so uh, and then you and it takes 90 minutes for you to get Malcolm from, uh, uh, you know, Detroit Red. So okay. you're 90 minutes into the film, literally, before you see Malcolm as Malcolm even beginning. So you're only going to get like 15 minutes of the Malcolm that became the threat to the to the universe, you know, uh, and the inspiration to the rest of us. So that that's um, uh, anyway. So that that would be, you know, my yeah. Well, we're getting some comments in the chat uh, since I'm really just all about throwing you into the controversy <laughs> here today, Jared, uh, asking <laughs> if Manny Marable can be trusted on anything. Oh, absolutely. In fact, my argument, we, we, we couldn't have put this in, in, in our book at the time, but since certainly since then, I think that were I or anyone to take a serious look, and maybe it's done, I don't know, um, at his breadth of his career, the final book, as I've been more accustomed to calling it now, that is attributed to him. I don't think he had much to do with in its final version. I don't think he saw it. I don't think, I think Wendy Wolf and Viking Press had much more to do with that final version. And I, and one of the reasons I, I, I've concluded that without full evidence, admittedly, is that when you look at the body of his work predating that book, even if you disagree with his conclusions, the quality of or the method he took to get there is so much stronger. I mean, he did his work. 
So, so, which is absent in his book on Malcolm X in terms of just the basics of academia, the basics of journalism, the basics of honest historical writing that were absent in, in, the, in the Malcolm book or at least present in, in, in at least the several books and many articles of his I've read over, over the course of his career. So uh, uh, not being a Manning Marable expert, I just think that there's a wild departure from, from you know, how, how capitalism underdeveloped Black America, for instance, to that. Uh, uh, just in terms of the quality of the, the the scholarship, so I would I wouldn't dismiss him on the basis of this. I would just look very skeptically at the broader process of publication in the book industry and the 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 the, the uh, you know the uh, Pulitzer Prize industry and the academic industry. I would look more you know uh, uh, you know skeptically at that uh, in assessing this final product attributed to Marilyn Marable. Yeah, no, I think those are all very good points. Just even the clickbaity nature uh, of some of those things just felt a little off. Well, obviously, there's, you know, much more we could probably say and, and build off from here, and we'll have to keep the conversation going, but I really appreciate you being willing to join us here in the show, Jared, and I hope everyone is not only following, but also supporting Black Power Media, which you can also support on Patreon, and pef- definitely, I think, pick up a live reinvention. I mean, it's not just about the Mirable book. I think there's a lot of just completely fantastic standalone information in there about Malcolm X for those who want to get deeper into the topic. So a live reinvention edited by Jared Ball and Todd Stephen Burroughs. And I was certainly very honored to have the opportunity to be uh, in the book itself myself with an essay. So Jared, as always, thanks again. Really appreciate you. Always a pleasure. Thank you both. Thanks Mm -hmm. everybody watching. Peace. 